Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about how to create these very specific hot bluesy licks that you probably associate with bluegrass guitar players like Tony Rice. Now the guitar break that I just played for you was chock full of these licks, but if you want to hear even more ways that they can be applied in a bluegrass situation, you should check out some of my Tony Rice videos because like I said, Tony does this all the time. Now these licks can feel really good when they're shoehorned into major situations, but there's some other places you might try them too. For instance, if you're playing in the key of G and your song has an F chord in it, like Salt Creek or Red Haired Boy, those melodies are particularly mixolydian, and this minor pentatonic sound is a really close neighbor to that, and sometimes it feels really good to mix the two. Another example would be a song that just already has a minor pentatonic melody, like Clinch Mountain Backstep. Now, before I teach you how to play these phrases, I do want to let you know real quick that we officially have mandolin tabs at LessonsWithMarcel.com. They're all arranged by the incredible Mickey Abraham, who you might recognize from the interview series that we do here on this channel. We're hoping to grow that library as big as the existing guitar tab library, and actually, Mickey and I have some other things in the works, uh, but I'll be telling you about that in future videos. For now, please share LessonsWithMarcel.com with your mandolin playing friends. Let them know that they can get high quality arrangements there. Anyway, on with these bluesy Tony Rice licks. So all of these licks start with a little bit of minor pentatonic work, either on the E string or the B string. And if you're wondering why that works, basically playing a minor pentatonic scale over a major chord is the basis for blues. The notes in a minor scale are one, flat three, four, five and flat seven and some of those notes really want to rub up against the notes in a g major chord and those notes feel blue that's just a sample of the technical talk now let's talk practical in short you want to be comfortable noodling playing something like this Now we transition into the three note chromatic phrase that connects the fifth and the fourth together. This turns our minor pentatonic scale into more of a traditional blues scale. And the note that we're adding in between the fourth and the fifth is the flat fifth, which is a really kind of aggressive blue note in a bluegrass context. Now, since we already have the flat third in that flat or dominant seventh, adding in the flat fifth is kind of a no brainer. So take a listen to what this small chromatic phrase sounds like. Now, even though we already passed through the flat fifth in that three note chromatic run, this three note passage actually really hammers home the flat fifth because it starts on it and it forces you to feel that blueness. And it's such a, it's such a good feeling. Now you can play it really simply like this, or it frequently gets extended out. People stretch that phrase out to try to seem like they're more competent guitar players. <laughs> To start closing off this lick, we use the minor to major third, which is something that I talk about a lot on this channel. I usually refer to it as the dirty third. Basically the minor third comes from minor pentatonic or blues language, and the major third comes from the chord structure. The G major chord has a major third in it. So when you transition between the two, it feels really interesting. Part of you is honoring this blue scale, part of you is honoring this major chord. And that instability is something that's really easy to appreciate with the third. A lot of times when people sing the third, they scoop up to it. A lot of times when we uh, play the third in country music, we bend up to it. And this is another example of that. We're sliding into the major third. Now, lastly, a lot of these licks close by having a little more pentatonic noodling. So down uh, maybe on the D string or the A string, we might get a couple more notes before resolving onto G. So make sure that you're comfortable using the rest of that minor pentatonic scale. Think something like this. All right, so now you know all of the parts. Really, all you have to do is assemble things in order with those parts and get creative. Here's a bunch of examples. Remember what you're looking for. We're starting off minor pentatonic. We're using the chromatic line that connects the fifth and the fourth. Then we're starting on the flat fifth for that pull off move. We're using the minor to major third. And then maybe we have a little more pentatonic stuff going on, but only if we're feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, listen to the licks. I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson. Like I said earlier, there's lots of new stuff happening with Lessons with Marcel, so videos have been a little bit sparse. I'm hoping to get things back on track. Um, if you want to support this channel, you know what you can do. You can snag some merch, or you can get some guitar or mandolin tabs now at LessonsWithMarcel.com. You can also sign up for Skype lessons or order a custom transcription that might be featured in a video, or you can just go down there, hit that subscribe button. Hell, that probably helps more than anything. Uh, so I'll see you all next time.